Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sport talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now, from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Great to have you with us. There are layers to this college basketball story. The latest one was today. Rick Pitino and the athletic director at Louisville, Tom Jurek, being put on administrative leave, essentially out of jobs. That's the next layer. But we aren't done yet. And that's what I'm interested to see here. And this is where, for example... It's this story right here that tells you all the cuts ESPN made that they don't have enough to cover it. They're doing stories such as um, they're placed on leave. You have to do that story. Uh, Patino couldn't talk his way out of this one. Have to do that story. What happens to Louisville now as a postmortem? Have to do that story. Here's the story they're not doing. Okay? Who else is going to go? What do the next 10 days look like? What does college basketball look like? What programs are implicated? Which ones might not be eligible for the NCAA tournament? Which recruits might not be eligible to be playing this season? And long-term, what does it do for the contract? Because remember, what is the cash cow for the NCAA? It is the men's basketball tournament. And instead of having, oh, let's say say Louisville. Instead of having Louisville in there, that's great, we've got Wagner. Your TBS and CBS just didn't like, uh, this doesn't look like. There are so many dominoes here that haven't been addressed, have not been addressed in this. Stunning. And that's where not having enough personnel hurts you. How deep does this go? Well, very, very deep. So, let's see. Today, we've got uh, Rich Scarcell at 335, Tim Jones at 406, and Wheels is going to be on the show today. I love talking to Wheels. Overdue to get Chris Wheeler back on the show. And a hacker and to get back in and talk with you. I think that we'll, you, you guys will break off into some Penn State football conversation in a very I may way. just I may, I may just let him ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> that's when it gets fun. Yeah, that's what uh, we'll have fun with wheels. I am so looking forward to talking with him. We'll get some baseball talk in there, but we'll also talk a lot about Penn State football, too, because he always sends me great texts, like really insightful stuff. It's like good stuff all the time. And... I can't wait to talk to Wheels today. That'll be a lot of fun having him on the show. Been too long. Way too long. And we have our high school football roundtable tomorrow. We actually only have one person that's really a problem with this, that kind of is acting a little bit of a diva when it comes to doing it. Do we have that person locked up? We do. And we also have Zach Showers locked up for the rest of the football season. He'll join us every Thursday. Zach does a great job. He does. He does. He appreciated your kind words and spoke with him last night. And he goes, hey, I'm available for the rest of the season. And I said, yeah, I bet the guy whose name's on the title of this show will not have a problem with that. 
No, nope, no problem at all. Yep. Uh, but you're telling me that the suit is already committed? Yes. Did you tell them we're doing it Friday? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely should have tried that last week when he had the off day because of the Phillies. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do it Thursday. Really? Yeah. I'll say he's sitting there listening to the Phillies game. They're not going to do the show, are they? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, I can't hold no, a meeting for this. <laughs> oh, I know. We're supposed to feel bad because he canceled a meeting for something. <laughs> like, no, I don't feel that bad. All right. But uh, the... The story about college basketball has layers upon layers. And when you're talking about the FBI, I want to give the FBI deserves a lot of credit because somehow, some way, they were able to either get somebody to talk. Because the layers include an attorney, an agent, an assistant basketball coach, a shoe company. I mean, these are all layers. The one layer they don't really have is a head coach. But, of course, we all know how it works now. Head coach is automatically implicated. Now, I will say this. I do not in any way, shape, or form know what Rick Pitino did or did not know. So I don't know. So I want to be fair here. If Rick Pitino had knowledge, he should be out of a job. But I am not for, all right, blow up the staff, blow up the program, blow up. I'm not for that. To me, it always should be, and I've maintained this for 30 years, if you are guilty, you need to be, to the fullest extent, taken care of. If you're innocent, you're innocent. Okay, now let's take it home. Let's bring it into your own company. What if somebody in your own company is involved in something nefarious? I don't care whether it's company related or outside the company. And something happens. Should you be slashed because of guilt by association? Should you be taken to the who's gal because of guilt by association? Or if you're innocent, are you innocent? I mean, again, let's put it within the confines of your own car and have you think here. Let's put it within the confines of your own business or your own home as you're sitting here listening to the show. Personalize it. If you are innocent and don't know, and somebody in your company does something, should you... Be implicated as well. Even if you're a supervisor. What? People don't do things on their own? Go rogue? And by the way, when you're doing something, what is the number one thing you're attempting to do as you go through your illegal process? What are you trying to do? Go ahead, Sean. What, what are you trying to do as, as you're going through an illegal process? Not saying you ever have, but... Okay, you're trying to make sure nobody finds out. Right? Do you want Roger to find Well, no, Roger now is going to want to talk to me about what you've been doing. Today. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you bring a good point. If that's any of us around here doing that, are you kidding me? In half a heartbeat, we'd be out of here. Right. But it puts, the, example, it puts the integrity of this corporation on the line. Right. right. Should be out right away. But say, for example, uh, let's, let's pick, say, say Mark does something, all right? Now, that would never happen, okay? It's not, I mean, that's not Mark's, okay? Mark's as good a guy as you're ever going to run, run into. But should we be implicated? All right? If I do something, should you or Mark be implica implicated just because, I, you know, I'm attached to the station? No, it should be me. I'm the one responsible for it. Right? You shouldn't be. You have no knowledge of what's going on. And that's why when I look at, well, 
coaches have to know. And so the coaches don't have to know. Sometimes, okay, let me give you an example. Say you're an assistant coach. And you're trying to do something that not only, of course, makes your program look better, but believe me, in the end, it makes you look better. Hey, look, up, Bobby just got that uh, one-and-done recruit. Wow. You know, that's the second one-and-done recruit he's had in two years. Maybe my program should hire Bobby. Or, as an athletic director, wow, Bobby got those last two one-and-done recruits to go to University 8 there. Maybe we should hire him as a head coach. Where you've got some assistant coaches trying to feather their own nest so they can move up the ladder. You know what I mean? So there's a lot more to, oh, the head coach has to know. They're in, they don't necessarily have to know. You've got to start, everybody's got to start thinking a little bit outside the box here instead of trying to draw the simple lines. Sometimes the head coach does know. Sometimes the head coach is like, hey, whatever, do whatever you can. Uh, and just don't tell me about it. Or you have some people that go rogue, do their own thing, they're trying to feather their own nest, and they're trying to move up the ladder and develop a, develop a reputation. Wow, Bobby's a great recruiter. See what I'm saying here, Sean? I mean, that's why you have to investigate to find out who really does and doesn't know. And then you go after the people, right? So if Bobby, is, Bobby does this as an assistant coach, Bobby should never, and say it's not, say we're not talking about, okay, this, we're talking about the FBI here, we're talking jail. But say it's an NCAA investigation, no jail involved. Bobby, if found to be implicated as an assistant coach, should never be allowed to coach at any level of the NCAA again. Ever. Done. Player. If player accepted money under NCAA rules, player should never be allowed to play in the NCAA, nor should they be allowed to hold a job in the NCAA. Okay? So you want to have some short term here? I mean, you're already a known rule breaker. You already did. I was only 18 at the time. Hey, guess what? We've been saying for a thousand years here that you can't take money. You know, which, which part did you miss? I mean, I think you've got to come down with, hey, you have no association with the NCAA as a player or as a coach or an administrator if you break rules like that. Now, that's the NCAA. This is different. Okay, when the letters FBI are there, uh, the words jail time are become a possibility. And the next 10 days may be the most interesting 10 days in college sports because will there be any more shoes to fall? Will there be any more coaches out of jobs? Because the mentality is, the mentality is we've got to save face here, slash, 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 slash. So will you find slashing happening at college basketball schools? And what then becomes, if you're going to focus on a group that might be involved in something like this, you're focusing on the guys that are in the one-and-done category. Okay. Who in that one-and-done category is actually going to play this year in college basketball? What does it then do to the programs? What about the coaches? The next 10 days, two weeks, we might get a lot of answers on that where we sit back and go, whoa. Does Sean Miller continue at Arizona? Based on it, now again, I, you know, I'm not applying my standard to this that I've already explained. I'm explaining the standard is, well, okay, we're going to show everybody, look, we're, okay, we're cutting ties with everybody, we're done. Okay, see what we did? Well, in reality, you did nothing. I don't think you solved the problem, except it made it look like you did something. Now, if the person's guilty, then you did a lot. But normally, investigations find out guilt or innocence. But the current climate is, well, oh, had to know, you're out. So is Sean Miller out of a job at Arizona? Is Andy English out of a job? Or Andy Enfield, excuse me. Andy Enfield, I grew up in Enfield, Connecticut. If anybody knows the last name, I should. If, is Andy Enfield out of a job at USC? And is Bruce Pearl, who's already been suspended and lost a job at Tennessee, is he out of a job at Auburn? So, I mean, these are just some of the schools that are implicated in the probe. 
this, these are just the schools that implicated the probe. Remember, no assistant coach is named from Louisville in the probe, but the Bowen kid is labeled there, and so is Louisville. And somebody talked in all this. Now, to be honest with you, if authorities came into our workplace, right, they could get the suit to talk in a heartbeat. I'm talking like, I mean, he's a save your own skin, you know. Look in the mirror, who's number one? That's me. I mean, that, yeah, Sean, you know that. Sure. It's, I, mean, the suit, I mean, the suit would sell us out in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a save your own skin guy. <laughs> yeah, the crazy stat I saw earlier today, and I shared it with you right after lunch, was uh, the breakdown of Rick Pitino's salary over $7 million, and over $2 million of that came from Adidas. So it kind of makes you wonder with these other athletic you know, equipment companies, if they're going to re-up with other coaches across the country, maybe they won't give them as less money. I don't know. Sonny Vaccaro started all this back in the 70s out of Pittsburgh. He came up with the idea of getting shoe money, and shoes and apparel to coaches. It's his idea. It's his baby. But it didn't, he didn't come up with this. Now, something else I think we will see. This is a guess. But you might see. You might see the NBA. Because remember, the one and done rule is the NBA rule. It is not a college basketball rule. It is an NBA rule. The owners wanted to go to two years and 20 years of age. Current rule is one year and 19 years of age. You may see the NBA just scrap it and say, look, you want to go from high school to pros? Go ahead. And take that level out of it. Well, just a thought. Uh, again, there's so many levels to this, Sean. This is not a simple cut and dry deal. You've got an agent. You've got a shoe company. You've got assistant coaches. You've got players. You've got their families. You, you've got levels here that are unreal in all this. And the FBI, to their credit, have found almost all the levels. Question is, how deep? I mean, how many people are actually involved, how many programs are involved, how many players are involved, and what does this mean for the future of college basketball and for the future of the NCAA tournament when it's all said and done? Auburn, by the way, already refunding season tickets amid probe. All right, we'll come back with more in a moment. You're on News Radio 1070 WKOK. When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Subway Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Merce family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle is worth. The SMC way is to offer you all applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC way? The SMC way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Great to have you with us on the show today. We have a lot going on on today's show, including Chris Wheeler. Great to reconnect with him. Very pleased, though, to bring in Rich Scarcella, Redding Eagle, one of the outstanding writers that's covered Penn State football for decades, even though he did not want me to use the word decades. Rich, welcome. It's great to have you with us. 
Yeah, you could have said just a few years. You know, decades is a little strong. But now I'm well, Steve. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing really well. Uh, I want to get. Uh, let's start with uh, what they did at the end because you and I have seen some of these games play out before. Maybe not in the last play. But what do you think long term that that did for what we're watching in this season? Oh, I don't think there's any question. Winning the, a game like that at the end at as tough a venue as you'll find in the Big Ten, I think it can only help Penn State going forward. And I think that's generally what I'm hearing and seeing from others on the beat and, and, and national folks. I, I can't. I I think it's going to help them. I do. Um, you know, Iowa. I, I I mean, Iowa might have given up. You know, whatever it was, 570 yards. But defensively, they had a really good game plan against Penn State. Uh, they took away the big plays down the field, and um, you know, Penn State committed some penalties, had a kick block, a couple turnovers, and all of a sudden, it's a game. Uh, no, I, I really think, you know, grinding that one out, that's going to help Penn State. This, is, this comes from me, but I liken Saquon Barkley in this way for James Franklin. I think he is to James Franklin, Franklin in the early stages of his program at Penn State to what Mike Reed meant to the early stages of Joe Paterno's program. Your thoughts hmm. on that? I haven't considered that. That's an interesting take. I... I could see where you're coming from. I, I, I haven't given that much thought, but, but I could see the correlation. Uh, certainly, you know, you, you, there can't be anybody more valuable uh, in the country to his team than Saquon Barkley. And, um, you know, what, what he did Saturday, you know, we, we think, especially after the Rose Bowl, we think we've seen it all. And then he took it up another notch on, to another level on Saturday with some of the plays he made against the Hawkeyes. Uh, but, yeah, that's a good that's that's a good comparison, Steve. Yeah, I, 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 I'd buy that. Now, we're going to have to see how it plays out, though, because then, you know, Joe followed up. Charlie Pittman became Lionel mm -hmm. Mitchell, became, you know, and we start going through the lineage of yep. great players. But we'll see how it plays out, but at least and that's the initial feeling I've got about this thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, him, he can only help Penn State re Penn State's recruiting, and not that they need any help right now, the way yeah. they have things going in that department. But, but yeah, I, 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 I could see that. I could see people wanting to follow Barkley to Penn State, sure. All right, uh, Indiana's going to come up next. This is an eight, you know, a nine-week grind mm -hmm. in this thing. I thought Indiana last year, I know what you thought, Rich. I thought they played Penn State really tough, and the score was a bit deceptive. Oh, I don't think there's any question the score was deceptive. I mean, Penn State trailed in the second half. Um, the, the Indiana defense played Penn State just like Iowa did very physically. Um, Penn State was on the ropes. And, you know, a couple big plays by Trace McSorley and then obviously the big play at the end by the defense. And the, the score is a lot more deceiving. It, it was a very, very tough game. And I, I think... Penn State left there knowing that. I mean, I don't think there's any question uh, that they're going to take this game lightly because they're not. Uh, you know, they, they know what Indiana is capable of, uh, especially after last year in Bloomington. I think what Saquon, I want to say, had 33 carries for 53 yards or some number like that last year. Yeah. They well, that, was, that was his most touches until Saturday night in any game. Yeah. And I think I think you're right. I think there were 33 carries and two catches. And, yeah, I mean, I remember the play that I think started, um, turned the momentum in Penn State's favor was when Trace McSorley got just absolutely clocked as he threw down the left sideline. And I'm trying to think, it was, it, I'm sure it was to Chris Godwin. Maybe I'm wrong. And and that was maybe went for like 30, 30 some yards on a third and long. And Trace took time to get up, and that was when, when the official asked him, are you okay, do you want to go out? And he said, mm, no. So, um, yeah, that, 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 was a, that was a really, really tough game for Penn State. And, uh, you know, they were, they were, I think they would agree, they were fortunate to win that game.
Yeah, they were they were in a lot of ways. That was also a game where Trace hurt his ankle and had to go out for mm-hmm. a play or two and then come back. So it really mm-hmm. hampered their running game when they lost him yep. in the in the game as well. The special teams component, the safety is mm-hmm. set up by a punt. Uh, mm-hmm. Can we put a price on what that component's now meant over the last year and a half? Well, let's go back to 14, 15, yeah. when mm-hmm. Penn State's punting wasn't so good. Blake Gilligan, Gilligan, excuse me, has added uh, another dimension to the punting game, and ha- as his, he's as good a kicker, as good a punter as I've seen or I can remember that Penn State has had. And, it, and did an outstanding job. I mean, you know, there were so many things that happened in the game Saturday night. But one thing that shouldn't be overlooked is his punting. Uh, did an incredible job. Uh, in the game on Saturday, it'll be the Generations of great, Greatness mm-hmm. game, and people will notice the uniforms and the helmets mm-hmm. and the shoes and so forth. But there's also going to be an on-field recognition, several of them during the game. One of them's going to be for the late Fran Fisher. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you put put into words what Fran meant, Rich, to the growth of Penn State football by what by his role in it? Do you have an hour? Yeah. I mean, really. Uh, um, you know, you know it. I don't have to tell you, but for for your listeners, Fran and and Jim Tarman and Joe Paterno were so instrumental in popularizing Penn State football across the state, and then of course. Then, then across the country, but mostly in, 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 it, in the early stages of the Paterno era, they would literally go across the state, I'm guessing in a van or a car, I don't, that I'm not sure of, and go from town to town and do public appearances just to promote Penn State football. Then on top of that, you had TV quarterbacks, which was on every Wednesday night on public broadcasting stations in Pennsylvania. I watched it religiously, and that was on an hour-long show live, and there would also be a player on as a guest. That also did a lot for growing Penn State football, and and just Fran himself, his personality, how warm a person he was, and how just a I mean, just a great guy. I I can't, even when in his later years when he was suffering, always had a smile on his face, always had a kind word for me. Uh, I don't know why. And just, I I, I can't say enough about him and and how I feel about him. And, um, you know, he is one of the central figures in Penn State football in the last 50, 55 years. No question. I have to ask you because you're an avid follower of college basketball. Mm-hmm. And we know what happened today, obviously, yeah. at Louisville with uh, Tom Jurek and also Rick Pitino. Mm-hmm. The layers of this run deep. How interesting do you think the next 10 days will be at programs across the country? 10 days, weeks, months, I don't know, but it is. I think this is just... Like like a lot of people think it's the tip of the iceberg, and maybe I'm wrong, but when the FBI is involved, and I just saw something a little while ago online that um, Nike is now be they 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 have Nike files and subpoenas. Uh, this could really really impact the way college basketball has been run for what the last 30 years with the, the, the heavily heavy involvement of shoe companies and and how much um, their impact has been on the game and on recruiting. Uh, you know, so I, I, I think this this could this could be just somebody said this somebody said this could be the biggest story in all of college sports and, and obviously we know one, you know, the the, the the scandal, the, the Jerry Sandusky scandal, that's obviously at the forefront uh, for us. But, you know, uh, on the field, this is as big as scandal. This could be as big as there ever was one, maybe even bigger than the, the gambling scandals of, of the 50s. When you consider that the cash cow for the NCAA is the men's basketball yep. tournament, now what kind of layer is that to deal with? Well... You know that's a good that's a good point. You have 
I'm going to do a little bit. This is going to sound ridiculous because I have taken my shots at the NCAA. But their investigation, investigative staff is not very big. No. And I don't know if they even have the resources to, to conduct such an investigation as the FBI has in the last two years. And so, you know, some cynics would say, well, why would the NCAA investigate this? Because of how much money they make off the NCAA tournament. I, I couldn't argue with that. So now you have, you know, how much, I don't know how long the year the contract runs out. Obviously, that's, that's not going to change. But going forward from here, yeah, I could, I could see how it has a great impact on rights fees and, 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 and ticket prices and, and whatever. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you see it? Well, I see. I think that you know, if you're TBS and CBS, this mm -hmm. concerns you a lot because oh my, suddenly, yes. for example, name brand school. So let's obviously let's name Louisville since they're the ones in, in, in the conversation today. Say say they're not involved. Oh, we've got Wagner though. Yeah. You're looking around, going, "That's great. I'm glad we got Wagner." This yeah. now impacts what kind of product am I showing on TV? And you're absolutely right, complete agreement with you. The NCAA does not have the resources to investigate what they're investigating now. So I, I am completely with you on that yeah. with the NCAA because it's taken them how many years now to investigate North Carolina? Mm, that's, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's, I mean, is I mean, that it's still mean, going it's been on. Years. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, so yeah, that, that, that's, the, that's the issue I have with them is that it, it takes them forever to investigate yep. North Carolina. They can't handle this. No, they couldn't handle. This is such a uh, an undertaking, you know. And and you know, if I were, boy, if I were college basketball coach at a perennial top, not even top twenty five, I'd go even top forty team. Uh, I wouldn't be resting easily right now. I know that. No, I know. I, I would not be either because of the, of of how many layers there are to this and they're constantly mm -hmm. saying well the head coach is in charge so the head coach has to know everything and you and i both know that's not true but that's just the way it is today mm -hmm. yeah so, I, I mean i yeah. i think well i mean I, I i think i may disagree with you on this one in this case i mean i think i i find it very hard to believe that rick patino for example who has obviously lost his job yeah. would not know about what his assistant coach uh was doing in trying to procure an athlete and if he wasn't if he didn't know he should have known because you're talking about a, 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 a you know with four, 12 to 14 players and you have four coaches full-time coaches three assistants and a head coach um if he didn't know then he then he wasn't doing his due diligence right that's an interesting point that that is a good point uh, and the only the only way i could see it were for example whatever coach, doesn't matter who it is, but team mm -hmm. or whomever, wouldn't know is that, say, for example, Bobby, the assistant coach, who's trying to feather his own nest and move up mm -hmm. the ranks, boy, Bobby keeps getting the one-and-done guys. We need to hire him. Some people want to feather mm -hmm. their own nest, and, of course, they don't want to tell you they're doing it. Well, let, let's put it this way, Steve. If they do, if, if you're a head coach and your assistant coach is getting these guys, yeah. you've got to wonder, how's he getting these guys? We haven't gotten them before. Good it's, point. It, 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 is it just his uh, his uh, pers persuasive abilities, or is it more than that? <laughs> you know, you really have to. No, and I'm yeah. serious. I mean, you you, you know, you, you wonder, and you know, maybe these basketball coaches, you know, they just kind of look. Okay, we got a player. I don't want to. Maybe I don't want to know. Maybe I don't want to yeah. know how we got them. Exactly. But they've got to at least suspect how they got these guys. Well, and I've told the story already. You know, no name and no name of schools. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But over no. the years, we've always heard that uh, there was a school that a prominent recruit mm -hmm. calls the coach in August. This is mm -hmm. this is several years ago. It was going to be a one and done guy. Mm -hmm. And says, "I'll be at the school tomorrow." You're going to what? So I'll be there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right? Never visited. Official, unofficial, no contact. Yeah. Just showed up. Played the year, went to the NBA. I mean, so it's not like this has never quote happened before. Right, right. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a sick. And, I mean, I think I think people who are around college basketball a lot more than I am. I, I covered Division Two and Division Three. Know that 
this has been going on, or at least I shouldn't say no, suspect that it's been going on and because of, you know, rumor, hearsay, whatever, and, you know, that they're not totally shocked by this. Are you, right. are you surprised by this? Not, uh, you know what? I ran the story yesterday, and everyone says, well, you didn't sound like you're really that surprised. And I said, nope. Yeah. Uh, just like you, you've heard the rumor and innuendo over the years, mm -hmm. but nobody's come forward and talked. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and I want to say this. You know, I mentioned if I were a coach of a top 40 program, that doesn't mean every top 40 program is guilty. I'm not saying that. That's right. Yep. But I, I'm just saying... I'd be nervous because you have the feds involved. This isn't mm -hmm. this isn't the NCAA. This isn't maybe you'll get probation. You may go to jail, you know, or somebody may go to jail. You know, who knows? Depending on, you know, how how uh, how far the tentacles reach on this investigation. Okay, finally back to uh, Penn State football. What do you okay. see? What are your thoughts on Saturday's matchup? Well. You know, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. I know I only saw Ohio, uh, excuse me, I only saw Indiana play Ohio State in the opener. Was extremely impressed with Simi Cobbs. I mm -hmm. think he's a, as as good a receiver in the Big Ten as there is. Maybe maybe the best one. Um, I I think Penn State is preparing for the tempo of the Indiana offense, which a couple players said hurt them last year. Um, I thought the Indiana defense going into the season would have been a lot better than it has been so far, and it hasn't. It's an experienced defense, and they just they haven't. I mean, they're giving up almost 200 rushing yards a game. So, I mean, I, I think I think Penn State, as long as they they play a more precise game, fewer penalties, one turnover or less, I, I think they win this game comfortably. Rich, it's always a pleasure. You know that. Thanks a lot for your valuable time. It's great to have you back with us. Anytime, Steve. You know that. Thanks a lot. Rich Scarcello, the outstanding writer for the Reading Eagle. Always great to have him on. Kim Jones in the next half hour. Uh, Wheels, Chris Wheeler in the final half hour. And currently at the moment uh, in management's office, the suit is selling us out. It just, uh, Sean, I keep telling you, he's, he's dangerous. I know. We're stuck over here being held hostage, but hey, you know, someone's over here doing the heavy lifting and might as well be us. But he's, he's selling us out. I'm I telling know, you I right know. now. He's, he's selling out Lawrence. He's selling out you, me. I mean, even Sarah. And Sarah is as, <laughs> as sweet as sweet as can be. I mean, it doesn't get any nicer than Sarah. The suit's in there. You know, I mean, Mr. Mr. Cover My Backside. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> He has a party going on. He invited three people, me, myself, and I. <laughs> Back with more in a moment on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Okay, our high school roundtable is tomorrow. And also, Paul Pozlesny and uh, Spider Caldwell tomorrow. How about that? Lou Prado on Friday. My brother on Friday. That's if we have a show. We're being sold out right now by the suit. Better let your brother know. He may have free time on Friday. <laughs> yeah, I'll let, I'll let him know. I mean, it's, like, there are just certain people that you look at, and it doesn't take much to break them. Look at it this way. You could be out on the golf course quicker <laughs> on Friday. <laughs> yeah. See, there are some positives to uh, that. That's what I'm looking for for it. It's the last hot day we're going to have for a bit, too. I mean, it's been really, really hot. Well, that's finally going to back down tomorrow. That's good. Kim Jones, NFL Network, next half hour. Chris Wheeler, my good friend, joining us in the final half hour.